Today, let's take a look at a sub $100 mixer. Great for podcasters, the Mackie 402 VLZ4. All right, so the first thing you're gonna notice when you pull this out of the box, I think, is probably two things. The size, it's, they call it ultra compact, because it is. Here's my hand, here's the mixer. It is practically fitting in the palm of my hand. So it's really small. You still get the two XLR inputs here and another stereo input uh, for three and four. So lots of power packed into a little package that is solid. I mean, this thing, it's not plastic, not even aluminum, this thing is steel. So it's nice and heavy, which could matter if you're traveling with it, but it's still very travel friendly. You can still just throw this in a backpack and be on your way, no problem. So they say it's built like a tank. It's true, it really is built like a tank. I, you could probably hammer a nail in with it, uh, or you could probably drive a truck over it. Of course, your knobs might break, but the point is it's really well made. And so that is the thing uh, that you notice first, which I really like. That has a lot of value to me. Uh, things that just feel like they're made uh, really well are important because those things tend to last. So it's still in the lineup of sub 100, but just, just barely, it comes in at $99. So it's just under, and I'm doing the sub 100 mixer shootout. So I have three other uh, mixers, which you'll see videos for each of those mixers. And this one so far, I like a lot, um, a whole lot. So I chose this one out of the four mixers for the sub $100 mixer shootout. I chose this one because of its build quality, uh, not necessarily the size, they're all pretty small. Also because it has the Onyx preamps and that is Mackie's best preamps. So for me, having a really good preamp is where it starts and sometimes where it stops. When I plug this in and I test the preamps, are they clean, okay? Does the audio come through nice and clean without hiss? Any self noise that the preamp and the components inside are contributing to when you turn up that gain knob, because when you use dynamic mics, which is my suggestion for podcasters, because we record in situations or studios or you know a home office, that isn't ideal for recording. A dynamic mic can help with that, uh, limiting things like out external noise, right? So rejecting some of that sound. If you have the studio for a condenser mic and you prefer it, that's totally fine. This has phantom power on it, so you can actually use phantom power with your condenser mics but I prefer a dynamic mic, but that's going to take more gain, okay? So you're gonna have to pretty much use the gain uh, all the way at its highest, most of it. And this one, the Mackie, goes up to 60 dB, plus 60 dB of gain. Uh, some are 50, uh, you can probably get down as low as 40. I've heard there's 70, but I haven't seen that mixer yet, which would be cool if it's clean. This goes up to 60, and I find that to be plenty. So. I have recorded some audio samples, just audio only with these, so check out the description for the link so you can listen to that, and I would use headphones to really get an idea of the difference in the, uh, the gain when you have to crank it up. And this one, you know, again, that's the first test. You know, you pull it out, is it built nice? This is built nice. Um, are the, you know, the knobs are really nice, and apparently these are sealed, so they sort of resist dust, and it's just sitting there out there on your desk. And again, the first thing to do is to plug in the preamp and if I put it all the way up, is it creating extra noise in my audio? This one does not, it's really clean. Now, something to say about that, this is not a USB mixer. This is an um, all analog mixer, it has no digital connection. So you're gonna have to bring this one in to your computer uh, via the analog out, either the tape out and the RCA or the main outs. Now this doesn't have pan knobs, but it does have this one switch that'll pan uh, channel one to the left and channel two to the right. And that is sort of a trick to get two separated channels uh, when you're recording into software for something that doesn't do actual multi-channel. So it does have a switch for that despite not having a pan knob. All right, somehow I managed to lose the ending part of this video. So I've jumped back in to finish off the review. Fortunately, I shot the B-roll. So a couple things left that I wanna say about 
uh, the Mackie 402 VLZ. And uh, that is another advantage that I really enjoy about this mixer is it has a higher resolution uh, LED meter. So in the other sub $100 mixers that I've taken a look at, usually you get like four LEDs and it goes from anywhere from minus 20, then up to six and zero, right? So between minus 20 and six, you don't really know where your levels sit. This one has a high res LED meter and it covers much more of the range, eight LEDs. So it's much more uh, granular and what you can see, you can tell uh, more accurately where your audio levels are at. So I like that higher resolution LED meter on this Mackie. Some other things that seem superficial, but they're not, at least not when it comes to my enjoyment of the mixer, is it has an on-off switch. So the other mixers you actually have to unplug in order to turn the power off. This one has a nice on-off switch, so you can turn it off when you're done and walk away from your desk. Seems small, but I really like having an on-off switch, go figure. Also the plug, the way this plugs into uh, the mixer itself, the power plug, has a nice three prong grounded plug that locks. And this little locking feature is really nice because you know that the plug's not going to necessarily get stepped on and pulled out. Normally that shouldn't happen, but if you're on location, that could be an issue. But having a nice little lock there, it's a nice touch. And an interesting little addition on this mixer, if you look on the back, it has these little, three little holes. Apparently these go to a mount that will then go to a typical mic stand. So you could take a microphone stand, you know, that has like three legs on it at the base and put this little mixer on top of there and it works as a stand for your mixer. So not something that I necessarily would use, but it's neat to know what those little three holes do. And maybe for you, that's something that would be cool, a cool way to mount the mixer depending on your setup. And then of course, I guess my biggest um, downside to this mixer, especially for podcasters, is it doesn't have an aux in channel. It doesn't have an auxiliary out channel, which is what you would use to do a mix minus setup, typically for recording Skype, Google Hangouts, or whatever VoIP software you're using. This doesn't have it. So I'd have to look at one of the other ones. The Behringer or the other Mackie are good options. So considering all of that, I really love this mixer. If I didn't need an aux send, this would be the mixer that I would probably purchase because it's built so well and it sounds so great in terms of the amount of gain it gives you, the amount of clean gain it gives you. So if you need the aux send, you'll need to look at another mixer. Otherwise, this mixer is built really solid and I enjoyed using it. Okay, I will see you next time. Now where is the rest of that footage?